When Rachel saw that she bore Jacob no children, Rachel envied her sister. She said to Jacob, Give me children or else I will die. Jacob's anger was kindled against Rachel, and he said, Am I in God's place, who has withheld from you the fruit of the womb? She said, Behold, my maid Bilhah, go in to her that she may bear on my knees, and I also may obtain children by her. She gave him Bilhah, her handmaid, his wife, and Jacob went in to her. Bilhah conceived and bore Jacob a son. Rachel said, God has judged me, and has also heard my voice, and has given me a son. Therefore she called his name Dan. Bilhah, Rachel's handmaid, conceived again, and bore Jacob a second son. Rachel said, With mighty wrestlings have I wrestled with my sister, and have prevailed. She named him Naphtali. When Leah saw that she had finished bearing, she took Zilpah, her handmaid, and gave her to Jacob as a wife. Zilpah, Leah's handmaid, bore Jacob a son. Leah said, How fortunate! She named him Gad. Zilpah, Leah's handmaid, bore Jacob a second son. Leah said, Happy am I, for the daughters will call me happy. She named him Asher. Reuben went in the days of the wheat harvest and found mandrakes in the field and brought them to his mother Leah. Then Rachel said to Leah, Please give me some of your son's mandrakes. She said to her, Is it a small matter that you have taken away my husband? Would you take away my son's mandrakes also? Rachel said, Therefore he will lie with you tonight for your son's mandrakes. Jacob came from the field in the evening, and Leah went out to meet him and said, You must come in to me, for I have surely hired you with my son's mandrakes. He lay with her that night. God listened to Leah, and she conceived and bore Jacob a fifth son. Leah said, God has given me my hire, because I gave my handmaid to my husband. She named him Issachar. Leah conceived again and bore a sixth son to Jacob. Leah said, God has endowed me with a good dowry. Now my husband will live with me, because I have borne him six sons. She named him Zebulun. Afterwards she bore a daughter and named her Dinah. God remembered Rachel, and God listened to her and opened her womb. She conceived, bore a son, and said, God has taken away my reproach. She named him Joseph, saying, May the Lord add another son to me. It happened when Rachel had borne Joseph, that Jacob said to Laban, Send me away that I may go to my own place and to my own country. Give me my wives and my children for whom I have served you, and let me go. For you know my service with which I have served you. Laban said to him, If now I have found favor in your eyes, stay here, for I have divined that the Lord has blessed me for your sake. He said, Appoint me your wages, and I will give it. He said to him, You know how I have served you, and how your cattle have fared with me, for it was little which you had before I came, and it is increased to a multitude. The Lord has blessed you wherever I turned. Now when will I provide for my own house also? He said, What shall I give you? Jacob said, You shall not give me anything. If you will do this thing for me, I will again feed your flock and keep it. I will pass through all your flock today, removing from there every speckled and spotted one, and every black one among the sheep, and the spotted and speckled among the goats. This will be my hire. So my righteousness will answer for me hereafter when you come concerning my hire that is before you. Every one that is not speckled and spotted among the goats, and black among the sheep, that might be with me will be counted stolen. Laban said, Behold, I desire it to be according to your word. That day he removed the male goats that were streaked and spotted, and all the female goats that were speckled and spotted, every one that had white in it, and all the black ones among the sheep, and gave them into the hand of his sons. He set three days' journey between himself and Jacob, and Jacob fed the rest of Laban's flocks. Jacob took to himself rods of fresh poplar, almond, plane tree, peeled white streaks in them, and made the white appear which was in the rods. He set the rods which he had peeled opposite the flocks in the gutters in the watering troughs where the flocks came to drink. They conceived when they came to drink. The flocks conceived before the rods, and the flocks brought forth streaked, speckled, and spotted. Jacob separated the lambs and set the faces of the flocks toward the streaked and all the black in the flock of Laban, and he put his own droves apart. 
and didn't put them into Laban's flock. It happened, whenever the stronger of the flock conceived, that Jacob laid the rods before the eyes of the flock in the gutters that they might conceive among the rods. But when the flock were feeble, he didn't put them in. So the feebler were Laban's and the stronger Jacob's. The man increased exceedingly and had large flocks, maidservants and menservants, and camels and donkeys. THE GOSPEL ACCORDING TO MARK The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophets, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Make ready the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John came baptizing in the wilderness and preaching the baptism of repentance for forgiveness of sins. All the country of Judea and all those of Jerusalem went out to him. They were baptized by him in the Jordan River, confessing their sins. John was clothed with camel's hair and a leather belt around his loins. He ate locust and wild honey. He preached, saying, After me comes he who is mightier than I, the thong of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and loosen. I baptized you in water, but he will baptize you in the Holy Spirit. It happened in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Immediately coming up from the water, he saw the heavens parting and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. A voice came out of the sky, You are my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Immediately the Spirit drove him out into the wilderness. He was there in the wilderness forty days tempted by Satan. He was with the wild animals and the angels ministered to him. Now after John was taken into custody, Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Passing along by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net in the sea, for they were fishermen. Jesus said to them, Come after me, and I will make you into fishers for men. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. Going on a little further from there, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who were also in the boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father, Zebedee, in the boat with the hired servants and went after him. They went into Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath day he entered into the synagogue and taught. They were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as having authority and not as the scribes. Immediately there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, Ha! What do we have to do with you, Jesus, you Nazarene? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be quiet and come out of him. The unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, so that they questioned among themselves, saying, what is this, a new teaching? For with authority he commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. The report of him went out immediately everywhere into all the region of Galilee and its surrounding area. Immediately when they had come out of the synagogue, they came into the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's wife's mother lay sick with a fever, and immediately they told him about her. He came and took her by the hand and raised her up. The fever left her, and she served them. At evening, when the sun had set, they brought to him all who were sick and those who were possessed by demons. All the city was gathered together at the door. He healed many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. He didn't allow the demons to speak because they knew him. Early in the night he rose up and went out and departed into a deserted place and prayed there. Simon and those who were with him followed after him, and they found him and told him, Everyone is looking for you. 
he said to them, Let's go elsewhere into the next towns, that I may preach there also, because for this reason I came forth. He went into their synagogues throughout all Galilee, preaching and casting out demons. There came to him a leper, begging him, kneeling down to him and saying to him, If you want to, you can make me clean. Being moved with compassion, he stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I want to be made clean. When he had said this, immediately the leprosy departed from him, and he was made clean. He strictly warned him and immediately sent him out and said to him, See, you say nothing to anybody, but go show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing the things which Moses commanded for a testimony to them. But he went out and began to proclaim it much and to spread about the matter so that Jesus could no more openly enter into a city, but was outside in desert places, and they came to him from everywhere. Chapter 6 On that night the king couldn't sleep, and he commanded to bring the book of records of the chronicles, and they were read before the king. It was found written that Mordecai had told of Bichthana and Teresh, two of the king's chamberlains of those who kept the threshold, who had sought to lay hands on the king Ahasuerus. The king said, What honor and dignity has been bestowed on Mordecai for this? Then the king's servants who ministered to him said, Nothing has been done for him. The king said, Who is in the court? Now Haman had come into the outward court of the king's house to speak to the king to hang Mordecai on the gallows that he had prepared for him. The king's servant said to him, Behold, Haman stands in the court. The king said, Let him come in. So Haman came in. The king said to him, what shall be done to the man whom the king delights to honor? Now Haman said in his heart, To whom would the king delight to do honor more than to myself? Haman said to the king, For the man whom the king delights to honor, let royal clothing be brought which the king uses to wear, and the horse that the king rides on, and on the head of which a royal crown is set, and let the clothing and the horse be delivered to the hand of one of the king's most noble princes, that they may array the man therewith whom the king delights to honor, and cause him to ride on horseback through the street of the city, and proclaim before him, Thus shall it be done to the man whom the king delights to honor. Then the king said to Haman, Make haste, and take the clothing and the horse as you have said, and do even so to Mordecai the Jew, who sits at the king's gate. Let nothing fail of all that you have spoken. Then Haman took the clothing and the horse, and arrayed Mordecai, and caused him to ride through the street of the city, and proclaim before him, Thus shall it be done to the man whom the king delights to honor. Mordecai came again to the king's gate, but Haman hurried to his house, mourning and having his head covered. Haman recounted to Zeresh's wife, and all his friends everything that had happened to him. Then his wise men and Zeresh's wife said to him, If Mordecai, before whom you have begun to fall, be of the seed of the Jews, you shall not prevail against him, but shall surely fall before him. While they were yet talking with him came the king's chamberlains, and hurried to bring Haman to the banquet that Esther had prepared. Paul's Letter to the Romans Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised before through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his Son, who was born of the seed of David according to the flesh, who was declared to be the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord, through whom we receive grace and apostleship, for obedience of faith among all the nations, for his name's sake. 
among whom you are also called to belong to Jesus Christ, to all who are in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you, that your faith is proclaimed throughout the whole world. For God is my witness, whom I serve in my spirit in the gospel of his Son, how unceasingly I make mention of you always in my prayers, requesting, if by any means now at last, I may be prospered by the will of God to come to you. For I long to see you, that I may impart to you some spiritual gift, to the end that you may be established, that is, that I with you may be encouraged in you, each of us by the other's faith, both yours and mine. Now I don't desire to have you unaware, brothers, that I often planned to come to you, and was hindered so far, that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among the rest of the Gentiles. I am debtor both to Greeks and to foreigners, both to the wise and to the foolish. So, as much as is in me, I am eager to preach the gospel to you also who are in Rome. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God for salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first, and also for the Greek. For in it is revealed God's righteousness from faith to faith, as it is written, But the righteous shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness, because that which is known of God is revealed in them, for God revealed it to them. For the invisible things of him since the creation of the world are clearly seen, being perceived through the things that are made, even his everlasting power and divinity, that they may be without excuse. Because, knowing God, they didn't glorify him as God, neither gave thanks, but became vain in their reasoning, and their senseless heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and traded the glory of the incorruptible God for the likeness of an image of corruptible man, and of birds, and four-footed animals, and creeping things. Therefore God also gave them up in the lust of their hearts to uncleanness, that their bodies should be dishonored among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for a lie, and worshipped and served the creature rather than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason God gave them up to vile passions, for their woman changed the natural function into that which is against nature. Likewise also the men, leaving the natural function of the woman, burned in their lust toward one another, men doing what is inappropriate with men, and receiving in themselves the due penalty of their error. Even as they refused to have God in their knowledge, God gave them up to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not fitting, being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil habits, secret slanderers, backbiters, hateful to God, insolent, haughty, boastful, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, unforgiving, unmerciful, who, knowing the ordinance of God that those who practice such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them.